Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about choosing the best method for solving a quadratic equation. So first things first, what are the four ways that we could solve a quadratic equation? I'd strongly recommend that you pause here for a second just to see if you can list them. It's a really good quiz for yourself, but besides me just telling you what they are. Okay, so the four ways to solve a quadratic, factoring, the square root property, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. Now, FYI, the square root property is kind of embedded in completing the square, but it is something that you could use by itself. Okay, so um, let's talk about like, wh what do you do with these? So you got these four different ways to solve quadratics. Which one do you choose? The reality is that a lot of times there is a best choice for a problem. And then sometimes there's an only choice for a problem. So I thought what would be a really good exercise to help you wrap your head around that is so the following problem. Um, I have four different types of quadratics and the exercise here is to use each technique only once. So there is a best choice. So I strongly want to recommend that you just pause the video for a second and think about it on your own. Even if you don't get it right, the, the explanation will mean more to you if you thought about it and made your own guesses before I tell you. So pause here, hit play when you're ready. Okay. So if you're totally stuck on what to do with this, kind of the first thing that you want to do if you have an exercise like this where you can only use the techniques once, looking at these problems, my brain, I don't see like even where I'm supposed to start. I'm really looking for what can I factor and I can't tell that by how these are written. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite these three equations with everything pulled over to one side so that I can visualize them. So let me do that. Okay, so I've brought everything over to one side and I didn't do that with this one because this one is clearly set up for the square root property. So I'll just go ahead and note that now. So we'll just write square root property. Okay, so for these other ones, so first thing I'm thinking of is can I factor it? So this one here can't be factored, not even, not even allowed. Uh, this one can 100% be factored, so I might want to use factoring here. And then this last one, if I think about it for a little bit, I cannot factor this. So the reality is that there's actually only one that can be factored. So I'm just going to write that there. That's factor. So in general, if you have, if you're left to your own devices and you can choose anything that you want, factoring is always the easiest technique to use. It is the fastest, but as you can see, not everything will factor. And so when not everything factors, um, then there is a best choice to make. So we are down now to completing the square or the quadratic formula. Okay, so for this one, this one is clearly a completing the square problem because the things that we want with completing the square are, we want this term here to be just x squared, not, not 3x squared, because if it's 3x squared, then I have to do more work and divide everything by three. So this is a hint that we might want to use completing the square. The other hint is that the term here is even. And so remember with completing the square, you divide this B term by two. So you can divide this by two. That makes this easiest for completing the square. So I'm going to write, just complete the square. And so for this one, so I'll show you this in a minute or two when we come to this problem, just to make sure it's really clear. But for this one, if I have to divide everything by three, even after I divide by three, this would still really kind of suck to, to have to complete the square on. So this last one is going to be the quadratic formula. Now the quadratic formula is, you could technically use the quadratic formula on any of these. This one would be hard to use the quadratic formula on, but these other three, A, B, and D, yeah, you could use the quadratic formula on all of them. It just takes forever. Okay, so let's jump into then uh, our choices and, and how to solve these. So starting with a, we already said that we want to complete the square with this. And I've just left this in its original form because this is the form that we want when we're completing the square. So when we're completing the square, we need to identify our B, which is six, and then take half of that, which will be three. And then I take my half B squared, which is nine. Okay. So if you aren't sure how to do this, I do have videos on this. Um, this is a review video. So just FYI, if you're like, oh, I don't know where that came from, feel free to check out one of my other videos. Um, I'll, I'll link them. I've got playlists of them and, and links and all that good stuff. Okay. So now that I have this half B squared, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to both sides of the equation. So this is going to be X squared plus six X plus nine equals two plus nine from here this side can be factored as a 
perfect square. So this will be x plus 3 squared, and this side will equal 11. Now, one other hint, if you forget how to factor this side, this x plus 3, this plus 3 is always whatever your half b term is. So if you ever get confused, you can always just refer to what the half b is. So from here, now I can use the square root property to finish this. So I'll take the square root of each side, so this becomes plus or minus the square root of 11, and then I can subtract off the 3. So I have x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 11. Cool. Okay, so on to the next problem. Like we said, we want to use factoring for this one. In general, if you can factor something easily, that will always be the way that you want to do it because it's just quick, right? So I bring everything over to one side like you see here, and then I just do it. So this becomes x minus 3 and x plus 1, and so then I just have x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. So yeah, in general, if you can factor something, just factor it, um, unless you have some exercise like this, or sometimes you might be told that you have to solve something in a particular way. But if you have to, so if I said, for instance, use the quadratic formula on this, like if I made you do that, or if I said you have to use completing the square on this, you could always still easily check this with factoring, right? So sometimes the techniques overlap with one another. So if you have to use, if you're being forced to use one technique, but you could easily use a second, you could easily check it that way. So for the next one, we said that this was really obviously the square root property. Um, that's because this is already set up as kind of a perfect square and a number. So this is just asking for us to go ahead and take the square root of each side. So if I take the square root of each side, this is going to become plus or minus the square root of 49. Okay, so now um, I can easily evaluate, right, the square root of 49. So this becomes plus or minus 7. And from here, now it's a little bit of preference based on what your teacher wants. Now if you have me for your teacher, um, what I usually want you to do is, in this case, you can easily figure out what negative 1 plus or minus 7 is. Now maybe some teachers would say you could leave it like this, but I say if you can easily collect these terms, then do it. You can't always easily do that. I'll point out another case where the, you can't easily do it, but if you can easily do it, let's do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two separate cases. So I'm going to have 2x equals negative 1 plus 7 and 2x equals negative 1 minus 7. So I've taken that plus or minus and I've separated it into these two different cases. Okay, so what this means then is I'll have 2x equals 6 or 2x equals negative 8. Negative 8. And so now I can divide everything by 2 to get x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. So there you go. So now for this last one, we said that we have to use the quadratic formula. Now the other thing to remember with the quadratic formula is that you can't use it unless all your terms are on the same side. So this I need to begin by subtracting the 3x off, and now we can begin the fun, 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 fun of the quadratic formula. Cool. So I've got my A, my B, and my C. I think it's a really good idea to write those out clearly for your teacher so that they know exactly where your head was at when you plugged everything in. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug these into the quadratic formula. So just as a quick reminder, here is the quadratic formula. So if I go ahead and plug everything in, this will become 3 plus or minus the square root of uh, Sorry, let's call this negative 3 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2. All of this over 2 times 3. Okay, so let me make a, let's see, actually I think I can, I can squeeze this in over here. So this becomes 3 plus or minus the square root of, what is that, negative 15, all of that over 6. Okay, so how can we simplify this? Let me make a little space. So to simplify this, um, what I can do is I can bring an i out of the square root. So this becomes 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 15 over 6. And then um, I can either leave my answer like this or I can break this up into two separate fractions. So as my answer is written, I cannot cancel out the 6 and the 3. That would be an algebra error. But what I can do is I can rewrite this as 3 over 6 plus or minus 
i times the square root of 15 over 6. I do have a video explaining like why this is a really common cancellation error that you can't do. You, you really want to break it up first. And in breaking this up, I can see that I get 1 half plus or minus i times the square root of 15 over 6. So this answer or this answer would be the final answer. Um, it just kind of comes down to preferences in whatever class that you're in. Okay, cool. So now what I want to do is I want to give you the challenge to try these by yourself. So same idea. Um, remember, math is not a spectator sport. So if you are studying for a test, the best thing that you could do is just dive right into these and try to work these out completely on your own. And then either you get stuck and the video will mean more to you or you get it, but try these on your own. Hit play when you're ready. Okay. So I will kind of break down why I chose the techniques that I did, but I will just tell you, so for this first one, we want to use the square root property for the next one. We want to use the quadratic formula for the next one. We will choose factoring. And for the last one, we will choose completing the square. Okay. So let's go into each one of these. So for this first one, this is screaming for us to use completing, or sorry, the square root property because it's already in the form for the square root property. So I can go ahead and just take the square root of each side. So I get plus or minus the square root of negative 24. And so then I have three X minus two is going to equal. So let's see, this becomes two I times the square root of six. So I'm assuming you are familiar with breaking down these radicals. Um, and so then I can go ahead and add two to each side. So I get three X equals two plus or minus two I times the square root of six. Now, this is one of those cases where I cannot easily combine these two things. So from where I'm sitting, I think that this is fine, but some teachers might, or homework systems might want you to break these up. So uh, it's kind of a thing of preference at this point, but I will say for this video that my final answer is two plus or minus two I times the square root of six over three. So I've got two X plus five X minus one equals zero. Mm -hmm. So I have sat with this and I have thought I cannot factor this. Um, once again, I don't want to use completing the square because I would have to divide everything by two and in dividing everything by two, this would become a fraction and nobody, nobody wants to do that. So we're just going to use the quadratic formula. So in this case, my a is two, my B is five and my C is negative one. So let's see, don't forget to write X equals. So this will be negative five plus or minus the square root of five squared minus four times two times negative one over two times two. So I'll just kind of rush this. So this becomes negative five plus or minus the square root of 33 over four. And so that really is the answer. Um, so you could break this up into two pieces if you wanted to. I've already discussed that, but there you go. There you have it. That's uh, that's what we got. Okay. So for the next one, so I've got X squared minus 12 equals X. So just to be in good habits, I am going to bring everything over to one side and now hooray, we can factor it. So if we can factor it, we are always going to factor it whenever we can factor it. Um, oh my God, so much easier. <laughs> so, okay, great. We have so much time on our hands now. So this is going to be X equals four and X equals negative three. Bada bing, bada boom. We are good to go on that one. And for the last one, so of course, by process of elimination, I know that I have to use completing the square, but also I can tell just by looking at this, that this is probably something I want to complete the square on because I cannot factor it. I would prefer not to use the quadratic formula. I know some people just want to use that for everything, but it does really take a long time. And the quadratic formula, you could easily make a algebra error in. I do that all the time. Um, so I would use completing the square with this one. I just think algebraically, I'm less likely to make an error. It's just my personal preference. And again, just based on this exercise, that's what I've got to do. So let's see, I'm going to take all these. So my B is negative two, my half B is negative one, and then square that and I get positive one. Okay. So now don't forget, you want to bring the negative five over to the other side. And then I want to take this value here and add it to both sides. Now, in the event that you feel like you're a little weak with completing the square, I do have a whole video where I break down how to do it. Um, 
Okay, so now I can factor this as x minus one squared equals negative four. Take the square root of both sides. So this becomes plus or minus the square root of negative four. Of course, the square root of negative four is gonna equal two i, so this is x minus one equals plus or minus two i, so then I can add one to each side to get x equals one plus or minus two i. And so there's your solution for that one. Okay, so hopefully that helps you kind of choose um, with all of these there tend to be like a best choice, but you can always check with other techniques um, and you know, other techniques will get you the exact same answer. So just something to kind of think about and a lot of times it's just a, an argument for efficiency. So if you found this helpful, I'd love it if you hit that like button, um, comment, comment if you have strong feelings, I guess, on a particular method. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate when you guys do that. And otherwise, check out some of my other videos. I will catch you guys next time. Peace.